All right, what's going on guys? It's me, Be Good Builds, or Brayden, and today I'm gonna to be showing you part four of the build guide. And today we're gonna to be putting together the internals of the rig or the electronics. So that's your cell router, your battery, uh, your charge controller, and your miner itself. So uh, in this video, I wanted to quickly mention that uh, I use a buck boost converter, which makes it really easy for you to switch out different types of minor uh, electronic uh, configurations. What do I mean by that? So uh, in this video, I use a Rack V2. Uh, and that runs on five volts in a USB-C connection, right, to power it. If you wanted to simply switch over to a different type of build, or, or miner, I mean, um, it's really easy to do that. So all you would do is take your buck boost converter, and let's say I wanted to switch to a sent, uh, sorry, excuse me, a synchro bit, right? All you would do is take that DC jack that the synchro bit comes with, cut it, plug in the two ends to the buck boost converter, and instead of running on five volts like the sense caps and, and rack V2s do, you would switch it to 12 volts as that's what the synchro bit runs on. So hopefully that explanation is good enough. Um, I Maybe if, if it's necessary, I'll make a video explaining that point further uh, and how to do that if you have a, a different type of miner other than a sense cap and rack. But in this video, I do end up using that sort of configuration. So that's what this video will be focused on. Um, but uh, besides that, I also did want to mention that this video might be kind of hard to follow as it was hard for me to record like the really up close stuff. Uh, if you find yourself getting lost or if, if I'm not clear enough, feel free to reach out and I'll try and help uh, as best as I can uh, in person. I have that contact form on the website or you could just leave a comment below. So anyway, that's all I wanted to cover and uh, we'll start by getting to the parts list. Thanks. Now that you guys have seen the parts we'll be using, here's a look at the tools list. For step one, we're going to install the charge controller and the buck boost converter to the battery. For this first step, I'm going to be just taking a little bit of Velcro adhesive and putting it on the back of the charge controller and using that to stick it to the battery. Once you've done that, you're going to want to go ahead and take some 12 gauge wire and some electrical lug configurations or assemblies rather and use that to connect your battery to the charge controller. The batteries that I order come with an assembly already made. Uh, if that's not the case for your batteries, you can always go ahead and order some 12 gauge wire and some electrical lugs and make it on your own. All 
all that I'm doing here is using some Velcro adhesive to stick my buck boost converter to the battery. Next, we're gonna need to power that buck boost converter. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some 22 gauge wire, put it into the intake terminals on the buck boost converter and use the other end to connect it to the charge controller's load terminals. Once that's done, I'm taking a moment here to program my charge controller. All that you really need to know here is that I need to set the charge controller so the load terminals are powered and I need to set them so the charge controller recognizes that the battery is 12 volts and lithium. To conclude this step, you're going to want to take the USB-C pigtail and wire it to the back of the buck boost converter. Uh, take note that the USB-C pigtail's white wire is positive and the black wire is negative. This is how we're going to power our miner. For the next step, we're going to need to take our cell router's wall wart and retrofit it to work with our battery. To achieve this, all I did was cut the wires that the cell router came with and applied some electrical lugs to the tips of the wire. This next step is pretty self-explanatory. All we're doing is dropping the battery into the case along with the cell router and plugging everything in. For this step we're going to be installing our solar panel cables. I start by using the crimping tool to remove some of the sheath from the cable itself. After this is done, we can go ahead and take our solar panel cables and thread them through the cable glands. 
After that, you can go ahead and take that exposed wire on the end of the solar panel cable and feed it into the solar panel uh, terminal on the charge controller. Next, we can go ahead and take our fan temp controller and plug it into the charge controller's uh, USB outlet. I don't show it on camera here, but also remember to install your temperature probe. Here, I simply just applied some Velcro adhesive to the back of the fan temp controller and I'm sticking it to the enclosure's door. And finally, the last step is just to plug in the fan to the fan temp controller and to plug in your miner. Uh, what I did not show on camera was feeding the miner antenna through the cable gland on the back of the box and plugging in the miner, uh, but that stuff is relatively implied. Hopefully this video wasn't too hard to follow. If it was, again, uh, I am considering making a second video showing how you can apply this uh, bug boost converter sort of configuration to other miners. If that's something that you're interested in, please let me know down, down in the comments below or on the contact form on the website. With episode 4 now down, episode 5 should be coming out within the next week or two and all that's left to do is apply some dielectric grease and some silicone to the box and deploy the thing. Thank you guys for watching and please feel free to leave suggestions down in the comments below as it does help me make these videos much better.